Right Righto guys, we're going to show you how to do a bit of a post and three rail hardwood fence. We've been working on one all week here today. Today's come down to crunch time, we're going to get this done, get a game on it. So it's a huge product. supposed to do it with a chainsaw. No, chainsaws are for hacks. We do it proper way, with proper materials, proper tools, because we have carpentry experience and this is how you do it if you know what you're doing. Don't be that idiot. Look at this weapon, what a boss. Cracker day here in paradise. Today we're drilling a bunch of holes, ready to run our barbed wire through our split posts. We're gonna give you a rundown of the way that we have found is the best way to do it. So over here, we have good old Steve. Steve's the man. He's got this wild looking drill bit on the battery drill here, big 32 mil pilot bit. What are we doing here, Steve? Uh, just um, scoring it, it's just taking the bark off really, so when we run the big drill through, it doesn't bind up yep. pretty much. Yeah. What happens if we try and bore the whole way with this one? Uh, I'll break your wrist. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Nearly happened a couple of times. Here you'll see, it goes there, just to the tip, it just takes that last little bit of the inner bark off the tree, so that when we put our big birther in there, it doesn't foul the tip on it and we can get a, a nice good pull the whole way through the post. Alrighty, this, if you hold that for me Steve please, you weapon. This is our petty drill. Again, 32 mil bit here. This is a deep bore, hardwood boring bit. You wanna start with a nice clean tip. If that tip once that tip fouls up, there are, and, and, the, and the initial teeth there on the um, on the flute foul up, it doesn't want to pull through so you always start with a nice clean tip. Little two banger thing this, it's, it's a pretty good bit of gear. It's even got a little uh, little level gauge on there so you can help you gauge your, gauge your uh, gradient for your wires. So we just kick her on, give a little prime, full choke, just like a chainy, pull it to the kicks. Choke down. Warm up a bit before we go bogging her up, pull on a full juice. Start down here, eh? Now, one thing with this fence line is it's not dead flat. It's probably a metre and a half. Maybe a two metre rise end to end, it's 186 metres long. So if we then dead level, we want to pull our bar through, then the bar is going to catch the bar. So we go slightly up here, oh, and that's where this one is. Going. So we get it close to where we want it, line it line up, set our level to where we want it, and away we go. Alright guys, I'm going to show you the important 
means of using tension thing so you get the right tensions on your wires. If you don't, and you guess it, you will always be under tension. If you go over tension, pass the rule, pass the point of no return, you run, run the risk of your wire snapping. So, with my trusty camera person comes in here, we can see this funky looking little device by Waratah. This one's a great one because it tells you what wire you're using and where it should be. Today we're using 1.57 millimeter high tensile barbed wire, which is that second column there. So the top edge of this little bevel wants to be on that line when we're at our right tension. And to give you an idea, we didn't have this with us the other day. So we just did a make safe, tensioned it up enough so we could leave it over the weekend. And as you can see, we weren't even close. So put this duty whacker on there. Come over your tension buckle now. And we start winding her up. And as we go, you can see that little plunger starts telling you when you're at the right spot, which is just about there. Now we've done that. Because we've gone through the holes on the post of these barbs, every barb in the post potentially can foul the tension between point A and point B. So, we need to free those up. And the way to do that is like this. Just click send. Give it a jingle jangle. Come back and check your bell. Now this one hasn't moved. Oh, it's moved of just a tiniest little smidgen. It's a short run, but that is within the ballpark. We go another click on the buckle. It's gonna to be too tall. So, take it off there, we'll move to the next one. Righto, that's the job done and dusted. Is Pat. Pat's the main brains of the outfit. He's the man, the myth, the legend. He's the one that gets all the work done when me and Steve want to just sit in the shade and drink cups of tea. <laughs> right, we are done. Other than there's one tension post in the line down here. It has to have a little champ for put onto the top of the post. Steve's walking up with the plane to do that now. And that is it. We are out of here. So we have from an existing post and rail that we didn't do. Four strand 1.57 millimeter high tensile barb Waratah long life barb wire. This line here is 186 ish meters long. Down to a post and three rail, uh, which is a decorative driveway entrance at a fork, and then onto another barbed wire fence that goes down for another about 100 109 meters down to the front with another driveway in at as well uh, it's been a good couple of days and uh, yeah give you a quick little quick little run over it Can do show the mastery of your craft it's the thing that separates actual fences from backyard joes is cohesion and knots have a look at this this is the attention post midline 
open that is turnbuckles evenly or all, all in line vertically in line one there is a slight bit out which does bug me but you know like at the end of the day just let it go jared <laughs> uh the other thing is our knots all these termination knots they're all going the same way through the buckle back over the wire and twist it off same way all in uniform and again three twists to a snap and again little things like that it's where the artistry of a fence comes into it